We thank God for this morning that he has given unto us. And before we go about our business of today, allow me to share with you, Dr. God's word that is drawn from Psalm 62. I will read only two verses and proceed to expound on God's word. The Bible says, my soul, truly my soul, silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you attack a man? You have slain all of you. Like leaning wall and tottering fence. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. Just as you may be aware that Psalms are the most interesting part of scripture. It was written in a period of 1,000 years. The initial Psalms were written by Moses. And the last of the Psalms were written by the post-exilic groups around 400 BC. From 1400 to 400, it's a period of 1,000 years. And Psalms are written for people at all times. When you are sick, you read the Psalms. When you are disturbed, you read the Psalms. When you are excited, you read the Psalms. Psalms are the most universal of all books. They apply to all times. As we live in the city, there are many challenges we face. There are many hassles and bustles of the city. There is fierce competition. And always, as we go about the life in city, in the city, we always seek for a soul, for our souls to have a resting place. The title of my sharing today is Where Do I Get a Resting Place in the City? Wherever we go, be it the village, the issues that will always beguile us, the issues that will beset us, the challenges that we'll face of raising children, of having a family, of um, the professional issues that will come around. There is cutthroat competition everywhere in this um, commercial and capitalistic society. This psalm was written by David, and it was written at a time when David was facing a rebellion from his favorite son, Absalom, the handsome, the most brilliant, and the most promising. But he rebelled against his father and overthrew him. At this particular time, the enemies beset him. This psalm, I think, is supposed to be written to three people. We are supposed, during the time of adversity, our soul will find rest for us doing three things. Number one, speaking to the adversary. And David speaks to the adversary. And he tells the adversary, how long will you torment me? A story is told of a pastor who was supposed to be shot during the Cold War. And this pastor was a very committed Christian and a preacher. And he captured this moment on tape. A Soviet Union soldier just approached him. And he said, since you are a pastor, I'll shoot you. He said, you are on tape. And I've, I'll send this tape. I've sent it remotely to people everywhere. And they will know that you killed me because of a gospel that I preach. And this message will go to the whole world. We are supposed, during some times, not even directly, but refer to the adversary. Secondly, we are supposed to speak to ourselves. And lastly, we are supposed to give a testimony to everybody. And what is this testimony? My soul has found a resting place in God. In the city, in the village, wherever you are, my friend, find a resting place in God. Why? Because of three very important things. Number one, in God we wait. And when we wait in God, we will always find the answers. We are always disturbed. We are always anxious. 
because we cannot wait upon God. There are many issues that we need answers, but I challenge you to wait upon the Lord. We have financial difficulties and challenges and issues to go about. But in all these things, let us tell our adversary, let us tell ourselves, and let's tell others, wait upon the Lord. Why do we wait upon the Lord? He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. We wait upon the Lord, not only because he's the Alpha and the Omega, number two, because he has all the answers, be it financial problems, be it family issues, all the issues God has the answer. My soul has found a resting place because I wait upon the Lord. Number two, I trust in the Lord. No matter what comes my way, I will always trust upon the Lord. I don't know if you remember the story that in Kampala, when I was doing my bachelor's degree, my first day in Kampala, I got a root shock. My certificates were stolen. Mm. And they were stolen in Uganda. Mm -hmm. The following day, I went to report to the police. And by the way, Uganda police put on gumballs. Mm. Yes. And even when you look at them, in their, in their shanty police station, and as they write my statements, there is no hope. <laughs> and you cannot trust this guy with a gumball. Mm. But the lady was so blunt. Mm. She told me the truth. You will never get these certificates again. Mm. My parents were back at home. There was no hope. But I trusted in God. I prayed there was nothing else I could have done. Mm. When you trust upon the Lord, you will never be disappointed. My brother, no matter your situation, trust in the Lord. You will never be disappointed. It is 21 years since we met. Mm. And we are both renting houses in Kericho. Mm. But today as I come and preach in your house in Nairobi, mm. what do I say? It is so blessed to trust in God. Mm. Thus far, the Lord has brought you. Mm -hmm. Because you trusted in Him despite all that you went through. And I want to challenge you, continue trusting in God. What the police told me is impossible. On one particular day, I had a gut feeling in my heart and God placed it in me that I'll get that thing on 4th of uh, April 20, it was 1999. I trusted in God. On well, that day, I expected somebody will come and tell me, Pastor, your certificates are here. Nobody came. God does not answer in, his, in our own way. He answers in his own way. Therefore, what do we do above everything? We wait upon the Lord. Therefore, later, I continued to pray. In Uganda, we did not eat to get satisfied or to get full, but we ate to avoid starving. We used to have these gina sauce. Gina sauce is um, uh, grinded um, groundnuts, and you make soup out of it. It was a terrible concoction. Especially for me, used to milk and skuma wiki. Mm -hmm. So during supper, that was served, and I uh, went to the chapel. As I was just about to enter the chapel at nine at night, somebody called me, You Kenyan, I have a mail for you from Kenya. But I thought, God, you are not answering me. The certificates were lost in Kampala, Uganda. There can be no way that the answer can come from Kenya. Mm. But I said, since it is my mail, I will open it. And I open it. And the words still ring to me. It is my late mother who wrote the, the letter. And in the first words, he said, Kimutai, thank God your certificates have been found. Mm. The person who found them looked for your mail in Kenya and he wrote it to me. Mm. And today what the police said cannot be found. Mm. I trusted in God. Mm. I have my certificates. That was why I, that was how I was able to proceed with my studies. Mm. And God, you never trust you trust in God because you know that God knows everything. If I did not have this, if I had the certificates, I could have left the institution. I thought it was 
a bit the conditions were a bit harsh mm-hmm. but god kept me and immediately after i got the certificates my course was changed from three years to one year mm-hmm. and i was able to graduate trust in god mm-hmm. lastly despite my soul will find a rest in god because i hope in him no matter what happens things will not remain like this forever they will change even when you are going through the most difficult of all times mm. i will rest in god and hope in him because there are better things ahead may the lord richly bless you that time amen may amen. the lord keep you may the lord sustain you it is great that technology has given us an opportunity mm. that we can even share god's word mm. from wherever we are amen. and it is good for your support and we have reconnected again mm-hmm. may the lord bless you mm-hmm. when you go home you greet canon and mm-hmm. your brothers mm-hmm. and uh, every member of the family mm-hmm. and let us pray mm-hmm. send my regards to your wife and children yeah. and may your blessings may god's blessing be upon you mm-hmm. let's pray mm-hmm. our dear heavenly father in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ i want to thank you for your servant dr edward sam I pray your blessings be upon him as he does the great job of serving you and humanity. Grant, I beseech thee, O Lord, that you will bless him in the hospital that he is serving. Dear Lord, I pray that you will richly guide him, that you will providentially protect him as he travels. As they live here, dear Lord, in this farm that they have here, dear Lord, I pray that you may replenish their resources. That, dear Lord, you may bless all the animals that they have, that you may bless everything. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the wife. May you bless her and the works of her hands. Prosper her. For their children, may your blessings and your peace and your providence and your protection be upon them. May they lack nothing. Dear Lord, as I travel to go and even minister, may the peace of God which surpasses human understanding and may the blessings of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and upon your family and even your family back at home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.